This conversation is taking place at the Biggs Museum in Dover. I'm talking today to Ryan Grover. Ryan, the Biggs Museum has been expanding both in scope and mission. Could you speak to how the Biggs is serving as a resource to the artists in the community? Well, in an unofficial capacity, I think the museum always had, but in the last couple of years, we had a way, um, we've invented basically a way to really streamline this, to really make it a part and, insti and institutionalize it here within the Biggs Museum through a new artist membership. Could you speak to how that partnership with Delaware by Hand has really complemented the more traditional focus of the museum? Delaware by Hand was established to be uh create a community basically of artisans within the state of Delaware, a visible community of these sort of uh, craft and fine artists throughout the state. As a nonprofit organization, they did very well, got almost 200 members, and new board members weren't coming up and sort of um, servicing this constituency in the way that we felt that they should. So the Biggs Museum stepped in to basically adopt it. And this became the launch of our artist membership here at the museum. And so the same group of individuals that we had always had in for workshops, the same group of individuals that had populated many of our competitions and exhibitions on the contemporary arts of Delaware were the same members here. This was just a way to really bring them into the fold and make it a permanent relationship. So this relationship has really contributed to the vitality and vibrancy of the museum. Could you speak to how that also contributes to the community as a whole? Well, 10 years ago, when I first moved to Delaware, I would type into the computer, Delaware Craft, and had not a single hit. There was no information, there was no visual component, and now the Biggs Museum is basically the, the, the singular entity, that entity that talks most about so many of these artists working within the state. And most of them are individuals that we give contact information for, we set up programs with them, um, they're people that you can come to the museum and see their work. Um, but it's really just sort of bridging the community with these artists working in their own backyards. We're sort of the doorway between those two worlds. Now, in addition to being having this relationship with artists, uh, the Biggs Museum is also an anchor organization in the First State Heritage Park. Could you speak to that relationship and what that does for Dover? Um, that's one of our most proud um, partnerships, really, um, and that's a long list of partnerships. But <laughs> um, the First State Heritage Park is this, you know, park without borders in downtown Dover, and so we become a spot where people can visualize those things that were most important, basically, to Delawareans um, from the 1700s up to the present. So when you're walking around and outside in Dover, looking at the edifices of these beautiful buildings, when you are in the state buildings, when you are learning about the history of Dover, you can then come to the Biggs Museum and see the more, um, the inside view, those paintings, that furniture, the silver that those individuals were using within these buildings, within these sort of now almost sacred spaces in downtown Dover. And you also have a, a rotating exhibits as well. As what, how does that contribute to what you have to offer to the community? Well, we have a, a wide variety of different kinds of exhibitions. Um, we have some very large-scale sort of feature exhibitions, um, like the projectionist that surrounds us today. Um, and that'll be featured for four months. And then there are also sort of um, smaller scaled feature exhibitions that focus very specifically on artists working and living within the state of Delaware. And we ca call this uh, the Curator's Choice Gallery, where we invite individual artists, artist groups, um, here to the museum to uh, have great scale displays of their work. Um, and when the museum expanded in 2010, giving us 50% extra room, we sort of felt that there was this new responsibility, this newfound responsibility to bring even more attention to the arts of Delaware. So not only did we have the more traditional four-month exhibitions, we created these one to two-month sort of specialty exhibitions as well. And we give them space, but we also backed it up with marketing money, and we really tried to bring as much attention as we possibly can to that really wide variety of talents within the state. Now the future of the arts depends on building audiences for tomorrow. Could you speak to the Biggs Museum's outreach to youth and how you serve youth? Well, I think that we could sort of summarize that with three words, kids, kids, kids. Um, every project that we do at the museum, we try and create a kids and family friendly sort of component. So there are always programs associated and almost always are they free. Um, we have our uh, 
We have a specialized sort of artist studio space here on the first floor. It's on a drop-in basis where kids can come anytime during the day, the Child Help Foundation Gallery. And it's fantastic because there are art supplies set up and you can just bring your kids in. We have specialized tours. We have all sorts of different kinds of workshops and programming that happen almost weekly here, specifically for kids and families. And like I said, it's almost always free. So. Um, yeah, we, we really are trying to mold those fresh minds with um, the stamp of the Biggs Museum across it. Well, Ryan, it's really been a pleasure chatting with you today in the middle of this magnificent exhibition. Thank you very much for coming.